Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study, prayer time. Uh, so glad to have you all on today. Pray that the blessings of the Lord be upon you and that you have enjoyed your day and your week thus far. Um, we thank God for each of you being with us tonight. We thank God for his presence. Um, we thank God for his protection um, because he's been taking care of us in the midst of all this stuff that's going on in the world. God's protection has been upon us and, and we definitely need to pause and tell God thank you for protecting us um, in the midst of all the stuff that's going on. Um, even the other day we were almost in an accident just going down the interstates folks not pay attention and just come right over on you and thank god there was space enough to go to the left and not hit the wall but uh but that's why i said be careful be prayerful um and just ask god to to take care of each of us um, as we move forward so we welcome you again uh tonight um to our, our prayer time and to begin things because we believe in Prayer and Mount Calvary, I say to you again, um, don't give up on praying. Don't give up on um, believing what prayer can do. There's some people that can attest to it, but there's some people that says, yeah, I just don't believe it. Um, but we know that the Bible says that the first effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man will avail much. So I pray that you will remain fervent in your prayers. Um, I pray that you would continue to believe that what you're asking God for, um, he will do it. So thank you all. Tonight we're going to be led um, in our prayer as well as in our scripture reading um, by Deacon Freeman. But before he comes, there are some names, some people that we want to lift up to the Lord and make known um, that they are asking for prayer. Uh, we always pray for all of our sick. We pray for all of our shut-in, those names that are given to us, and even the names that are not given to us, we uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Um, we ask prayer tonight for uh, Deacon Mathet, Deacon Jacob Mathet. Um, understanding is he lost his sister, um, on Monday. Um, so we pray that God will bless him and his family, um, understanding that she was uh, very seasoned, 96 or 8 to 97 years old. Um, but thank God for longevity of life. Um, but still, it's a loss um, in his family. So let's pray for Deacon Mappet and for his family. Let's um, keep praying for uh, Deacon Charles Aston. We continue to lift him up in prayer. Continue to pray for Deacon David Mack um, as he continue to go through his therapy as well. Um, I pray for um, um, Mother and uh, Dr. and Mother Jacks. Continue to lift them up in prayer. Um, John is um, progressing along. My understanding is he's getting a little better uh, each day. So, again, one of those um, signs of prayer working. Um, you ask, God responds. Um, and even if he doesn't, we still don't talk to him um, and let our request be made to him. So uh, keep praying for Dr. Jackson, Mother Jackson. Um, keep praying for Reverend Williams. Um, pray that God will continue to strengthen him, strengthen him physically, spiritually. Um, pray that God will continue to uh, bless Sister Williams as well. Um, keep praying for Reverend and Sister Cochran. Um, and God will continue to bless them as well. Uh, Mother Shirley Pearson, continue to pray for her. Um, and God will bless her as well. Sister Judy Barner, we're praying for her. Um, also, uh, Mother Carolyn Simmons, we continue to pray for her too. Um, we know that she has her issues with her back, but we know that God um, is able to do all things. Uh, we pray. Uh, see, he's on here, Brother Paul Mack. Um, give God praise um, for him and for his progress. Um, my understanding um, lost a cousin, I believe. Um, so let us be prayerful for him and his family um, at um, the Mac family at the loss of a relative. Um, so, but we know God is able to provide what 
um, the family needs. We continue to pray for um, this is Lakisa Stafford. Um, she is in Emory Hospital now. She's back in the hospital and um, pray that God will strengthen and provide what she needs. Um, pray for Reverend Stafford as he's there with her um, and standing with her and praying for her. Um, so pray that God will strengthen her and um, also give him strength um, as he continues to stand with her. Uh, also, be keep praying for Mother Loretta Nelson. We know she had loss in her family as well. Um, so we want to continue to lift uh, Mother Nelson up in prayer. Sister Kathy Mosley, keep praying for her. We know her situation, we know what's going on with her, but we thank God for his mercies uh, and for his strength. Um, so we continue to pray. Sister Kathy, Sister Glory Beckham, we thank God for her. We continue to um, lift her up before the Lord as well. Um, Sister Buford, we continue to give God glory and praise for positive reports, thanksgiving. Um, thank God for um, Brother Moses of Dallas, uh, understanding he had kind of a down day, but um, but God is able. The um, Bible teaches us about keeping our mind stayed on him. Um, so we pray that when you know, individuals begin to get down in their mind and in their spirit, uh, that God will lift them up by way of his Holy Spirit. So we pray for Brother Moses. Dallas. We also pray for Deacon um, um, Anderson. Um, pray for Deacon and Deaconess Cofield. Um, that God will bless both of those couples, of servants of the Lord, um, to be strengthened, and to be back um, serving in their capacity in God's house. Um, Sister Doris Butler, we continue to pray for her. Um, had a chance to talk with her Sunday um, after service and um, just pray that God will continue to bless her and her family. Um, and we pray too that um, God will bless Brother brother Mike, Thrash and Douglas, Thrash as well. Um, Douglas is starting therapy or what he has therapy on Monday and Thursday, I think. Um, but we thank God for the progress uh, that he's going through. Um, pray for Brother Nate Moore. Keep praying for our youth. Keep praying for our young adults. Um, uh, keep praying for the city of College Park. I know that we've been having some people from the board there um, attending our service. You know, we, we just pray that God will intercede um, in our church being a light on the hill um hopefully others will find it and come to the light and want to know what uh, must i do to be saved and god will provide the guidance that is needed even for city leaders um so some of the decisions they make it impacts our church um so we pray that god will guide all of the decisions that are made uh in the city of college park um and i was about to say earlier um Thank you all so much for um, the information that you share um, with me after service um, or whenever we have time to talk. And uh, sometimes I, I write it down when I get back to my office, but sometimes it might slip my mind. So if I don't call your name or I don't say it, um, it's not because I'm not thinking about you or I haven't been thinking about you. Um, but just know that I appreciate uh, the prayer requests and even the positive reports um, that you give to me um, and you let me know that it's been beneficial to you so thank you uh, for believing thank you for trusting um, and uh, thank you for not giving up on god because we know that god has not given up on us so let's keep praying let us keep believing um, and trusting that our master will do the rest so at this time um i see deacon freeman is there um, I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Freeman for our scripture reading for the night, as well as for our evening prayer. So, Deacon Freeman, it's in your hands, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, hope you had a great day. I did. Um, our scripture today will be coming from, I will be reading from the first epistle of John, chapter 1, starting at verse 5. 
This then is a message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us of all sins. If we say that we have no we have not we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all righteousness, of all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a lie, and the word is not in us. I just read to you from the book of John, First John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Uh, now let's pray, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, our God, in the name of Jesus, the one who sits up high and looks down low, Father, we come this evening, Father, we bow our heads, Father, first of all, to give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Father, for being God and God all by yourself. Realizing, Father, there's nothing we can do without you. So we're calling upon you right now, Father, to Continue to take control of our lives, Father. Make them what you will have them to be. Father, we need you in everything that we do. Father, realizing sometimes things are up, sometimes things are down. But we, Father, we ask right now, Father, no matter what the situation is, Father, we can always rejoice and give you all the praise. Father, you heard the name of the ones that were called out, Father, that's on the sick list. Father God, I can't remember all the names right now, Father, but we know, Father, that you are God. You are the healing God. You have all power, Father. We ask, Father, that you would step in and whatever their needs may be. Father, I ask a special blessing this morning, Father, to give them comfort, Father, for the Nelson family and the Mavic family, Father. Father, realizing, Father, that you made no mistakes. Father, I pray, Father, just soften our hearts, Father, and ease their pain, Father God. Father God, I also pray, Father, for the entire Mount Carroll Missionary Baptist Church family. Father, I pray, Father, that you continue to bless us as only you can. Right now, Father, I pray, Father, that you would take control of this Bible study. Father, thank you, Father, for the opportunity for us to gather together once again, Father, to study your word. We thank you, Father, for the man that's going to deliver your word. We pray, Father, that you would anoint him, Father, he may speak to us. Father, realizing that your word is all we have to stand on. Father, your word is a lamp to our feet, Father, a light unto our paths. Realizing, Father, that we need your word more now than we ever did before. We pray, Father, that your word dwells in us, stay with us, Father. So when we're out in the world, Father, folks can look at us and tell that we are one of your children. Father, I pray, Father, that this Bible study help our light to shine just a little bit more. Realizing, Father, that we can do nothing without you. We need you, Father, in everything that we do. Right now, Father, thank you, Father, for this time we have to fellowship together, even on Zoom, Father. Something special is going to come out of this tonight. Father, I want to thank you once again. Most of all, Father, I want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross, rose on the third day morning with all power. In his name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dick, for um, leading us in scripture reading and in our prayer. Um, and such a powerful statement that almost confirms some of my thoughts today. Um, as you said in your prayer, um, God's word is all we have. That's all we have to stand on. 
um, and we have to believe. Um, so I thank you for going to the throne of grace for us um, and interceding on behalf of our church and um, and reminding us that God's word is, is all we have and it's all we need. Um, everything else will pass away. But he said, my word shall stand. Um, so thank you again so much for uh, that scripture and prayer. Uh, and good evening again to everyone. And again, we welcome you um, to our Bible study time. Thank God for you being here with us tonight um, as we are studying uh, the book of Ephesians. As we are tracking our way through chapter one um, as we are seeing what God has to say to us in regards to his word. Um, I am being blessed um, on this end um, of delivering it to you. Um, but as Paul says, I'm delivering to you what was delivered to me. Amen. So I'm grateful for the spirit of God that dwells in all of us um, who are believers. And we'll see more of that tonight that will continue to give us an encouraging spirit for this chapter one has really encouraged my heart. Um, it has given me additional insight to the works of the heavenly father, um, of God, the father of what he did, um, long before we got here. Um, and all that he did was for his own good pleasure. Um, so those things just gives me joy in my spirit as we study them. And as we continue to study them, um, it just continues to add more and more. The more we read, the more we study, the more we see what God did for us, which should give us that joy in our heart and to give us hope that there is something beyond this. Um, and when we have hope, I always say you can make it tomorrow um, if you have hope. Uh, so again, um, we are going to take up um Somewhere I think I left off at verse number 12, but I wanted to revisit part of verse number 11, that last clause in verse number 11. I wanted to um, go back and revisit it. And um, because there's some, you know, additional things that I don't think I had enough time to to put enough meat on that bone. Amen. I think we we left some stuff on the table. So we we're gonna put it back in the microwave and warm it up and so we eat on that some more, amen. <laughs> so, um, but we talked about on last week, we were dealing with this, um, this concept of dispensationalism. Remember we talked about the uh, eight dispensations. We went through them step by step, which ones they were. Um, and we talked about us being in the dispensation of grace, um, that we're in a period when God is giving us this opportunity um, to get our lives and our relationships right with him as well as with one another. Um, and also is giving the lost the opportunity to come to Christ by way of the preach word and by way of his Holy Spirit. Uh, so we are, as Matthew 28 teaches, uh, to be his witnesses. So we've got to make sure we continue to go ye therefore and teach all nations. We've got to tell folk about him. And the more we tell them about him, the more opportunities are given for people to give their lives to Christ. Um, but we talked about this, uh, this idea of dispensation, and we know ultimately that is referencing the millennial reign of Christ. When Christ shall come back and reign on the earth for a thousand years, we begin to look at texts, even in Isaiah, about there being peace on earth, that everything is going to be at peace. Nature is going to be at peace. Animals are going to be at peace. There's not going to be any issues. Uh, that are going on in the world because God is going to be the Prince of Peace reigning on earth uh, for 1,000 years. We also read in 1 Corinthians 15 about um, the universal peace uh, that shall come when he shall put all things under his feet. Uh, and, uh, we looked at that as a, the will of the Father. This is being revealed to us, uh, this mystery of what God's will was that um, when all things have culminated and come together, um, God the Father is going to bring all things together under his son, Jesus, um, who is God the Son, and is going to bring all things on in heaven and on earth um, together under him. Um, and to know, oh my God, that we have something to look forward to. I said it Sunday, there's a brighter day coming. 
Um, and we think we've seen some good days. We ain't seen nothing that's going to compare uh, to that which is yet to come. So, Mount Calvary, I continue to encourage you um, to keep looking to the hills. Um, the Bible says, watch as well as pray. Um, for we know that God's word is true. Um, I don't want nobody to be sad, but it's a joyous occasion when the Lord returns. Um, it's going to be a great day. Uh, it's a day that even Bible says nature is groaning for it. Uh, everybody's waiting for this great return of the master. Uh, so we we saw that and it says that in him, and the Bible says that we have obtained this inheritance. And that's kind of where we left off talking about this inheritance, knowing that we have something uh, and we already have it. And we're going to see even tonight um, how that is held together and how that is guaranteed um, to me and you. But we have this inheritance um, from God, the Father. But it's something that was predestined to him um, that he wanted to do. Um, and, and he did it according to his own goodwill. Um, and we left off at that last clause um, after the counsel of his will. So I'll take up uh, there tonight because it is one of the scriptures I want to read in regards to that counsel um, of his own will. Um, so thank you all. Uh, pray that you got your outline together. Uh, I was looking at outline. We kind of tracking right along through the outline pretty good. Um, so we kind of stayed in line on things. We still don't have too much stuff in there that ain't on the outline. Uh, so let us uh, bow very quickly before the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this time together of studying your word. Pray that you will lead and guide us into truth and in righteousness by way of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would take out any humanistic efforts that maybe within our hearts and mind to think that we can do this on our own. God, I can do nothing without you. We can't understand anything without the power of your spirit. So I pray that you would take control of us, Lord. We know that your spirit lives in us. So I pray that he, Lord, will lift up in us right now. Take control. We yield. We humble ourselves, even in this time of study, that he may teach us. For your word says that he will lead and guide us into truth and righteous teaching us the things that you would have us to know, Lord. So now we humble ourselves um, at your feet and pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will move in us right now, uh, that we can hear what your Spirit has to say to the church. So guide us even now. Bless those that are here, Lord. Pray that you would move anything that's hindering them from hearing your word. Pray that you would remove it out of the way that they can hear you clearly tonight and encourage our hearts and our minds and our spirits. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. And we dedicate this time to you right now, Lord. So I pray that you would have your way. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And church says, Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So um, as I was saying, I want to jump back in on that last clause um, as we were just saying that um, that we have obtained this inheritance. Um, we know that an inheritance, we said, is a possession that is received upon the the death of another, and we know that we received our inheritance at the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ, because he is the one. He was the one through which our inheritance was to come, our inheritance. And we have that um, inheritance. And I want to, um, I'm not sure if I got to it um, on last week, but I want to revisit it um, because the Bible talks about you and I having something. When I talk about hope, we got something waiting on us. There's something, there's more to come. Uh, we're joint heirs with Christ, um, that God has something um, in store for us. So if you were to look, go over to First Peter chapter 1, um, and I want to read verses um, 3 through 5 um, in First Peter, um, in regards to us being joint heirs with Christ and knowing that we got this inheritance. Um, and, and it says that, blessed be the God, Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercies, he has begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that to an inheritance, you and I have an inheritance. He has gotten us to an inheritance, which is incorruptible and undefiled and faith is not a way reserved in heaven for you um, who are kept under the power of God uh, through faith until unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And we talked about that being this dispensation, the fullness of time when God is going to bring it all together. But even Peter talks about we have this inheritance and this inheritance is uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And turn with me one more place in Romans chapter eight. 
Come back to Romans chapter 8. I want to look at verse 16 and 17. Uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 16 and 17. And I say this because I want you to know that we have something waiting for us. And God's word teaches that we have something waiting for us. And Romans chapter 8, verse number 16, 17 says this. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also uh, glorified together. So again, the Bible teaches that we have something waiting on us. Uh, we we, we uh, have been grafted into the family. We have been adopted into the family. And now that we're in the family, God says, I have an inheritance for you. It's an inheritance that you already have. And it is something that you, you, you're heirs of, which means that there's a lineage of something waiting for you. And you are uh, co-heirs with Christ, the son of God. Um, so again, we should be encouraged knowing that God's plan was to prepare something for us even when we leave this place. How great a God, because sometimes we think about what we don't have here, knowing that even before we got here, God has something planned for us when we leave here. So the joy of knowing that being um, uh, uh, those who are heirs, or there's something that we're going to inherit um, at some point, and we're going to see that uh, a little bit later on when the time comes. But the Bible says that this inheritance, we were predestined to us according to the purpose of him. Uh, basically, it was his own purpose, not you and I. It was God himself that he worketh all things. Look what it says. He made that decision. When it says worketh all things, he made that decision, all things after the counsel of his own will. To to, to counsel means to, to sit and discuss it. Um, to, to sit around like, like you sit around and you have a table of folks and that's a council and you sit there and you try to come to conclusions about what you're going to do. God counsels with himself. That's what I love about it. He is sovereign. He is omniscient. He don't need nobody else input because when you think of it collectively and you think of it individually, that when God blesses us individually, Ain't nobody else you can go to and say, thank you for helping God get that to me. No, it was all God. He, he, he may use other people to bless you, but it's all him. It's his decision. It's the counsel of his own will. So look with me um, uh, uh, as, as we look at this thing of the counsel of his own will. Turn to Isaiah. Uh, we, we jumping a little bit tonight, but we're we going to get settled in a second. Isaiah chapter 46. Um as God revealed to, to Isaiah in regards to his power, talking about the power of God, Isaiah 46. And I want to read, starting at verse number nine. Look at what the text says. The text says in Isaiah 46, verse nine says, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, look, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God basically is saying, I, I know what's going to happen before it happened from the beginning to the end. And I'm the one who made the decision and what decision I made, I counseled with myself and I made the decision and I did it for my own good pleasure. Look, careful, we got to always remember how powerful the God is that we serve. He is an almighty God. He is an omnipotent God. Uh, he sits high. Nobody sits beside him. Nobody sits with me. He, he stands alone as God, as he said in the text there in Isaiah, I am God and there is none else. And, and, and God is not arrogant. God is God. And that's what I love about him. And I believe that his word is true. So now when we look at that as a whole, we know that God says that I'm telling you and showing you what my will is and letting you know that my will is to gather all things under my son. And in him, there's an inheritance for you uh, because you have believed in him. Um, and the reason I did it was because I talked with myself and it was my own decision to do it. And again, goes back to what we saw earlier, because I'm a gracious God. 
I'm a God that shows grace toward you. I'm a God that shows favor toward you, even when you don't deserve it. When I saw your life from the beginning to the end, I'm still gracious. When I saw all the mistakes that you made, I'm still pouring out grace upon you. Uh, and that is enough to make me want to serve him even more. It's that thing of not necessarily serving God for what he does, but serving because of who he is. He is God and he stands alone. So, so this, that's, that's the uh, will of God. Um, uh, and, 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 and this will was made it after his own counsel. This was his own decision to do. And then he says in verse number 12, based on um, his will and this inheritance that we have, um, he did it all, verse 12 says, that we should be to the praise of his glory. How many times have we seen that phrase already? That he did what he did, that we would be to the praise of his glory. In essence, God wants to look at us and be like, this is my doing. I am the one who did this. I am the one who is to receive the honor and the glory and the praise out of what my plan and my will is for their life. It was my own choice. Um, and they're going to be the praise of my glory. That's why the, 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 the chapter even started out talking about giving praise to God. You and I got a reason to give praise to God and just making it to verse number 12. We see just how much reason we got to give praise to God. Paul starts by, oh, by telling us to praise him, but by the time we get to verse 12, good gracious, Lord, I see why I ought to be praising you continually for your plan that you have for my life. That even when I'm down, you still work in your plan. Even when I'm in the middle of chaos, you still work in your plan. And I know you're going to work it out for my good because you said all things work together for the good of them. So I'm trusting you at your word. He says he did it all out of his own good counsel, that we should be to the praise of his glory. Look, who first trusted in God. Now, I got to switch on you. Paul in verse number 12 changes the meaning, or not the meaning, or should I say the antecedent of we. Who is the we that he's rever referring to in verse number 12? Well, let me pause before I go in it. When we started, I, I told you that we will see in this text how the entire Godhead um, has involvement in our spiritual blessings. And what we've seen those, thus far, our spiritual blessings are based on the election on the Father, because we saw the text says he chose us. That was the work of the Father. Uh, and then we've seen the redemptive work of the Son, because the Bible says, the text says that we have been redeemed and forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Now we move into verse 12, we see the assuring work of the Holy Spirit, because we're going to see the text says that he seals us. And and, and this word, we're going to get to it, it's, it's a guarantee. He guarantees that we're going to get the inheritance. So we see the work of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, all that work in God's plan for me and you in order for us to receive what we have. So Paul says here in verse number 12, he said that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in him. Now that we is referencing to the children of Israel. That's the first we in verse 12, because we're going to see another we later on. He says that we should be to the praise of his glory. Now, why would Paul say we? Well, we know that Paul was a Jew as well. And, and when Paul uh, uh, acted in his Jewish format, uh, 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 Paul, you you hear him kind of giving um, his, his his story from the tribe of Benjamin, a, a Pharisee, all this stuff that Paul gives his background of who he is. And, and, and in verse 12, he leans on that Jewish perspective because he said that we should be to the praise of his glory because he says in that last clause, who first trusted in Christ. Now, why in the world? Will Paul say that? The reason why is because remember the work of Christ. Turn with me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And I want to look at verse number 25. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read verse 25. Um, Paul and, 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 and Acts is 
Uh, this is after the Holy Spirit has came upon him and he's talking to the Jews because they're in Jerusalem and now all these folks are baffled about what happened with them speaking in tongues and fire to cloven tongue, all these folks that are saved in this work of the Holy Spirit that is going on and now they're, they're confused. But look what Paul says in verse uh, um, Acts chapter 3, verse 25. He says, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant. We know this is the Jews. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with uh, our father saying unto Abraham, again, just proof that these are to the Jews he's talking to, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Look what he says in 26. Unto you first, God having raised, uh, raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning every one of you from his iniquities. All right. So we know that when Jesus first came, who did he come to? He came to the Jews. Well, what did John say in John Chapter one, matter of fact, turn with me, John chapter one. I, I want us to make sure we, we that that we we understand it. John chapter one, verse eleven says this: He came unto his own, and his own what received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So he came to his own, and his own received him not. Then Paul says in Acts, I mean, uh, uh, Peter says, uh, that's Peter speaking in Acts. Peter speaking in Acts, he said, he said, look, when God came, he came to us. And he came to us first. Christ came to us. Remember what Jesus said when he looked over Jerusalem? He said, how I wish that I would just take you under my wings, arms like a, 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 a hen takes her chicks to protect you. I came for you, but you just didn't want what I had to offer. And what Paul is saying here is that, yes, he came to his own, but they did not receive him. So after that, Paul took the message to the Gentiles. Amen. That's why Paul is known as an apostle to the Gentiles. So in when we look at verse number 12, even matter of fact, even one more place, we, we quote this scripture a lot. Um, Romans chapter one, verse 16 uh, says this. It says that for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto them that believe to the Jews first and also to the Gentiles. Let's us know that God went to his own first. And what did they do? They rejected him. And so this is what Paul is saying, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. That's, I'm back over in, um, in um, um, Ephesians again, uh, reiterating his text. Uh, he, he says that he went to them first. But he says in verse 13, you need to catch it. He says, in whom ye also trusted. All a part of God's plan. The Jews not believing or the Jews not accepting was not the Jews just doing what they want to do. No, God has said from the beginning through Christ, the entire earth is going to be blessed. He said that before Abraham, he said that through him, the entire earth is going to be blessed. But he had to come through a lineage. What lineage did he came through? He came through the lineage of Abraham, through the Jews. And when he came to his own, his own received him not. But then he says, many as believe on him, to them he gave the power too to become the sons of God. All a part of God's plan. Here's the good part, Dr. Willie. That was already determined before the beginning of time. So me and you are not a second class person who were saved. We were part of God's plan. God had to bring his son in through some lineage. He had to get here. He had to come as a natural man. So he had to choose a people whom to send him through. But just because he came through the lineage of Abraham, he's not here just for the people of Abraham or the descendants of Abraham. He came for all of humanity. If that wasn't the case, then John 3.16 would read completely different. It would have said, for God so loved the Jews that he sent his only begotten. But that's not what the text says. It says, for God so loved the world, the cosmos, that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? Because that's part of my plan. This is the one that I had already ordained before I even put you here on earth. So he says, 
in, in that verse 12. So it says that the Jews first, yes, they, they had that opportunity first. But the inclusion part is in whom ye also trusted. That 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 word trusted means um when you heard about it, because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get into this thing a little bit. When you heard about it, you 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 viewed it as true. Um and please understand that whatever understanding we have of God's word is not us. It is the spirit working in us. The only way you understand anything that I'm saying in this text is because the spirit of God is giving us understanding. What did we see back? He, he gave us this, this wisdom and this prudence, this understanding so that we can know his will. And he helps us to understand his will by way of his Holy Spirit. That's why I, I, I love this portion of the text, because God gives us his spirit and he says spirit is never going to leave us. We can grieve the Holy Spirit, but he ain't going to never leave us. Amen. We can push him down, but he ain't going nowhere. He's always going to be there. Says so that whom we, when we viewed God's word as true, he says, ye also trusted when? After ye heard the word of truth. Jesus. All right. This is putting it all together. I, I, I'm going to read all of 13 because 13 is all of us. This is our salvation. This is how it worked with me and you. This is not just for the believers in Ephesus. This was me and you too. Verse 13 is all of us that are saved. It says, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye, after that ye believed, ye were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. That's every believer individually. Amen. Because mama hearing the word can't save me. I got to hear it. Amen. So this verse 13, I need for us to personalize this text. I need us to internalize this text. And even if you have to sit and think back through your own life and think back through your own uh, salvific experience, when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I need you to think back to that moment in time when when you knew that something was going on paul says that uh, um talking to these uh, believers he says in whom you trusted that 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 you viewed this as true he said after you heard now the bible says that there's some who have ears and can't hear and it's not the fact that they can't hear audible sounds they can't hear what the spirit has to say regards to the words that's going in their ear. I tell you time and time again, this word has not changed. It didn't change when you were running the street. It didn't change from the time you were acting a fool. It, it didn't change from the time that you were being the person that you used to be to the time that you got, got an understanding of it. It's the same word, but something happened at the moment that you heard it. The spirit of God opened up something in you and you heard it differently. There was a level of conviction in you that made you hear something that you may not have never heard before. And the Bible wasn't written when you believed. It had been there the whole time. It, it ain't new. It was there the whole time. You was at church the whole time, but you still never heard it. But when God opened your ears, that's why the Bible says, blessed are your eyes, that for, for many have desired to see what you see. Blessed are your ears, for many desire to hear the words that you are hearing. There's a lot of educated folks that got knowledge in their head about the Bible and still haven't heard God's word. They're scholars. Amen. There's a lot of scholars out there. But being scholarly is not going to get you into heaven. Amen. I don't care how much you can break it down in the, into to the Greek and the Hebrew and all that, and do, but if, 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 unless God opens your ears and you're able to hear what the Spirit has to say, 
Look what the text says. It, it, it says that when you heard, heard what? The word of truth. When you heard the word of truth. How often do we um, quote study to show that self approving to God to be a workman, need not, approve, need not be ashamed so that you can rightly divide the word truth. Um, God's word is truth. I want you to go somewhere with me. Um, go with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And I want to begin reading at verse 13. Remember what I told you to do. Don't forget about your salvation experience. Um, listen at this as you think about you being saved. It says, in verse number 13, uh, um, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 14 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not, there it is, heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of of peace and bring tidings, bring glad tidings of good things. But look what he says. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. And that word just means they have not all believed the gospel. For Elias said, Lo, who, who hath believed our report? But look at verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. All of us, we didn't get it until we heard the word. I don't care if it was grandmama, mama, or daddy. Somebody was sharing the word with you when something happened in your heart. It's the word of God that causes things to happen. So you got to hear the word, which word? The gospel. The good news, euangelion, is, is the Greek. It's the, it's, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. His life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. The, the, the life of Christ, believing that his work on Calvary was all that is needed for you and I to be saved. Believe that. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And you got to hear the good news. That's why when you hear in messages and, 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 and services on Sunday, why does it all end with Calvary? Why does it all end with Jesus? That's the good news. The story of Peter ain't going to save you. The story of Paul and Moses ain't going to save you. Some kind of way, you got to point that thing back to Jesus. He, his life is the good news. That's the euangelion, that is the gospel. That is the word. Paul told Timothy, preach the word. The word of God, the message of Christ. And that's the underlying source of our salvation. Look what he says. He says, when you heard it, the gospel, there it is, of whose salvation? Of your salvation. When you finally heard it, you believed and that you were saved. That's why I was saying, can nobody do this for you? And you can't go to church on the back of other people. Oh, my mama saved, my mom, my mama saved, my big mama saved, my grandmama saved. My, well, what about you? Can you say that I'm saved? Can you make that? confession and professing within your heart. It says, I know that I'm saved. How do I know that? Because I know what I believe. And I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall call upon him, the word just said, shall be saved. Hear it. You got to trust it. And you got to believe it. Because some folk hear it and don't believe it. 
That's why the text says that Joe James said, you just can't be a hearer of the word. You got to be a doer of the word. And if the word says believe in your heart, you got to believe. You can't be like, I don't know if I really believe or not. Well, then how can you be assured about your salvation? If you say to yourself, I don't know if I believe or not. The Bible says that he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Even God says in his word, who shall believe on his son shall be saved. And who does not already damn. So we got to make sure that when we search our hearts, amen, somebody, we ain't going through no motions and playing no games because this is serious. Our personal relationship with God is serious. And don't confuse work with salvation. Don't confuse because I do this, I'm saved. Because I do that, I'm saved. The question is, in your heart, do you believe? Amen. You've got to believe. And I can't stress that any harder than I am right now. That you've got to believe beyond the shadow of a doubt. And Paul says, you trusted it. You heard it, uh, it, it. You heard that gospel of your salvation. And whom after you heard it, you believed it. It's not just some great story. It's God revealing his plan for humanity. It's God being kind enough to me and you to say, I'm a such a great God. I'm going to tell you how it started. I'm going to tell you what happened before you got here. I'm going to tell you what happened while you're here during this period of grace. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen when you leave here. And I'm going to tell you what's happening at the end. I'm just a gracious God. I don't have to tell you anything, but because I love you so much and I want you to choose to serve me. I don't want to twist your arm. I don't want to have to kick your heart in. I want you to hear the word and believe. And again, he says, you got to believe it. Now, here's the, the loving part and the part that I know ain't going to have time to finish. That's going to go all in next week. Uh, he says, when we believe, the last clause in verse 13 says, you were now, we all know what worry is. Past tense. Already happened. Not will be, not waiting to be, were. When you heard the word and you believe at that point, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Something happened when you believe. Amen. Some folks start to cry. Some folks start to shout. Some folks get a burning inside. Something changed on it. You start feeling something different, but yet, yet and still, you ain't perfect. You still got the tendency to do the same stuff that you used to uh, just before you were saved. Yeah, the old man is still alive, but there's a new nature that's in you now, which is God's spirit that is within you. That's there to lead and guide you and teach you in the truth and righteousness. So on the day that you accept and receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know it all. But you're saved and you're sealed. That's why the Bible talks about Deacon Irby. We grow in grace. Every day in this walk with God is a day of growing. Paul even talks about that when we studying the word, we start out uh, uh, on the sincere milk of the word. And then we grow into eating the meat of the word. Amen. And I use that illustration. You don't give a newborn baby meat. You get milk, nourish them, grow them up. Then at a certain point, you get to a point to where you can eat and digest. It's the same way when we're saved. At the point of salvation, God seals us. And once we're sealed, now you got to grow in this thing. And so don't, thank you, Jesus, don't base your salvation on where you are with God or based on how much somebody else know about the word in comparison to what you know. They are not your gauge for salvation. God gives every man a certain measure of faith. What God is doing in one, he can be doing something different in another. So just because somebody can quote more scriptures than you don't mean they're more saved than you. No, it does not. There's one God, one spirit, one baptism, one salvation. God does it. We are all there together. 
And whatever God gives to us to use, I'll keep saying it on Sunday, that it ain't even for that person. It's for the edifying of the body of Christ. If you can quote scriptures, then encourage somebody with quoting the scriptures. Not boast about how many scriptures I can quote. Paul says I can boast about a, a lot of things, but I rather boast in my infirmities. That while I'm down, God is being glorified. While I'm being persecuted, God is being glorified. Paul says that's what I'll glory in. But we've got to know that we have been sealed. And I'm going to talk about it, and then i got to close out. Sealed means it, it carries the term of, of, of security. Uh, a seal is is um, a sign of a finished transaction. When Whenever you got legal documents and you go to see a notary and your stuff has to be notarized, what does the notary do? They take a what? A seal and stamp the paperwork. And at that point, those documents are legal. Amen. There's a seal on it that makes it now a legal document. And I'm going to put this together next week too. So think about that from this perspective. When we believe God put a seal on us or a seal in us, which is the Holy Spirit. Well, what is the purpose of a seal? The seal shows that the transaction has now been completed. Both parties have done their part. Thank you, Jesus. God the Father chose us. God the Son comes along and dies for our sins so that we can be redeemed back. And the minute we believe what the Son did, the Holy Spirit comes and say, Ram, I stamp you. Now you belong to him. You are part of the inheritance, everything that the father promised you are going to receive. If you have been stamped, this whole deal now is sealed by me. It's the Holy Spirit of promise that seals us. It's the spirit that is the sign to me and you that we have been sealed. The presence of the Holy Spirit in us is the sign that we belong to God. It's a deal. God worked this thing because the text says that we have been bought with a price. We've been purchased. Let me ask you another question. When you buy something, what is the proof that you bought it? Don't they give you a receipt? A receipt is a seal of purchase. Come on, somebody. What is our seal of purchase? I don't have to walk around with a piece of paper in my hand to prove to somebody that I have been saved and sanctified. No, there's something that's on the inside of me that seals me, that lets me know that, hey, I got it. And if you don't believe I got it, then, hey, that's up to you what you believe. But if you believe for yourself, the Bible says, how, how should we try one another? Uh, Mother Sheila, we try the spirit by the spirit. And if you got it and I got it, we going to touch and we going to agree that I ain't going to be sitting here wondering if you saved. You ain't going to be sitting here wondering if I'm saved. Why? Because God is not the author of confusion. We ain't going to be sitting here disagreeing and arguing with one another. If anything, we're going to be sitting here praising God together. Why? Because the seal that's in you is the same seal that is in me. And if that agrees, then we're going to praise God because what he doing is telling us we belong to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel good knowing that I have a seal. And I'm going to finish this thing, uh, uh, this thing about seal next week, because the seal serves a purpose. So God didn't just give you his Holy Spirit just to say, I know Jesus says, I got to leave you, but I will not leave you comfortless. I pray to the Father and he'll send another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He shall be with you and he shall be in you. So he's saying, look, I got to go, but my father got a plan. I can't tell you what the plan is because the plan is within him. I'm just telling you that he's going to send something. And the purpose of him coming is to teach you and to lead you and to guide you and to choose and all righteousness. But Jesus goes away and the father says, now that my son has left, I'm sending the seal, the deal. And the seal is the Holy Spirit. I got him. Thank you, Jesus. I got him. I don't and, and and the thing I love about this thing, I don't I, I don't I don't have to show my I don't show my identity or proof to anybody. I just live it. 
I just let him have control. And sometimes I do just like everybody else. I quench the Holy Spirit. I push down. I know that there's things that I shouldn't do that I do, but thank God that he forgives me and puts me back in his spirit, puts me back and he guides me where I need to go. We all sin and come short, but thank God, even our sinning can't remove the seal. Thank you, Jesus. The seal is permanent and we have not been sealed by man. We have been sealed by God. There's, there's another seal I'll talk about next week. There's, there's, it's just so much to this one. Um, and I hope that it encourages you that as you walk around, keep your head up. You have been sealed. The inheritance is yours. And the Bible going to teach us in the next verse, uh, when we get there next week, that there's going to be a time that you get to retrieve all that God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much um, for this. I told you this, this, I mean, this is just 13 verses and I just can't even wrap it all around my head. I, 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 just, I still feel like there's more to it uh, that I haven't covered, but thank God for what he is sharing with us um, in our Bible study. So bow with me. Father, thank you again for this time. Thank you again for the study of your word. Thank you again, Lord, for what you have done for us. Lord, encourage us that we're not basing our worship of you on what's going on in this world, but we know that there's a better day coming. Lord, I pray that you will continue to bless us here, continue to keep us, continue to provide for us like only you can. Thank you for those that were on tonight. Thank you, Lord, for them pushing their way through to study. Lord, I pray that this word tonight will encourage somebody's heart lift them up in their spirits, is it to let them know that they have been sealed in you and that can nothing take away what you said whom the Father has given to you. No one can plug them out of your hand. Thank you, God, for saving us. Thank you for giving us a life that we can live for you. So now, Lord, I pray that you will bless us until our next appointed time together. Pray that your spirit will continue to cover us, keep us, and protect us like only you can. Lord, touch our sick. Bless our shut-in. Lord, I pray that you would touch Sister Lakisa Stafford right now. Touch her lung, Lord. You know what's going on. And I pray that one touch from you, Lord, is all that is needed, that you would be merciful toward her. So, God, I thank you. I pray that you would keep us. And thank you for our word tonight. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen and thank God. Amen. God bless y'all. Again, good to see you all. Hey, mommy, good to see you on tonight. Look forward to seeing you all on Sunday morning. And thank you all for the praying and the studying together. God bless y'all. I keep y'all. We'll see y'all next time.